This disheveled mess you see on your screen is Invest 93L. Now it's gonna try to develop, but regardless of very heavy rain coming to parts of the North Gulf Coast, we're gonna track that along with today's severe weather threat across the northern tier of the country. And there's also a critical fire risk in the West. We're gonna break all of that down through the course of this video. If you don't wanna watch the whole thing, I know your time is valuable. I'm gonna have chapters in the description. You can bounce around to those different time codes to watch what you want, although I hope you hang out with us the entire time. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from and what the weather is doing. If you're a fan of the weather or just staying informed, you've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button and we are going to get to it. Okay, so looking at this satellite, you think, all right, we have a pretty intense complex of thunderstorms rolling around, and we do. However, it is not very organized, and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about in a couple of minutes. I wanna talk about the impacts first, and then we're gonna get into the science and meteorology on if Invest 93L has a chance to make a run for tropical depression or storm status prior to it coming ashore. A lot of thunderstorms right now. This is the mid-level center. This is where all the thunderstorms were hanging out over uh, Invest 93L, again, that disturbance that came in through Florida yesterday across the Atlantic. So a lot of thunder, a lot of lightning moving through. This is kind of the mid-level portion of the storm again. I want to show you first, though, some of the impacts with this. This is going to be for Friday. This is uh, that the National Weather Service issues these, the Weather Prediction Center. So they have highlighted really central and western Louisiana, of course, part of the uh, Mississippi and Alabama Gulf Coast as well, for a slight to moderate opportunity for excessive rainfall to create flash flooding. That's really going to be highlighted from the Texas-Louisiana border through about Baton Rouge. And I think even down to Grand Isle, we're not in the red, but certainly as you will see here, I think most of the rain is going to fall just right along the North Gulf Coast. And you may see those maps from the Weather Service change as we continue to try to get better data and get a handle on how this thing is going to develop. So I'm going to tip my hand a little bit in some of the science and meteorology of Invest 93L right now. But we're looking at a couple of different things. The thunderstorms that I showed you are out here. The low level center of the storm itself is over land. And that was indicative yesterday as we had the low level center come right there, the circulation at the surface. And then all of the thunderstorms associated with that were a little to the south and west. And that was evident of wind shear out of the north and west kind of separating the two circulations. For a tropical system, you need to have those two kind of on top of each other, like the stack of pancakes, like the, we'll use the kind of uh, engineering structures, uh, the Empire State Building, it is a straight structure. That was more like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, how it was tilted. So a tropical system wants to be vertically stacked, as we call it. I'm gonna show you that on satellite a little bit uh, in a second to give you a, a better idea. But if you're wondering why that spin is up by the Florida Panhandle, that is why. So there is five o'clock in the morning on Thursday. And again, we have the low level spin right here. It's helping to create some thunderstorms around Mobile, certainly towards New Orleans, Grand Isle. We'll take this a little further out and you'll see things really start to blow up a little bit in terms of the thunderstorm coverage, not in terms of the storm itself. There are very little things that have this getting its act together prior to coming ashore. The icon model that I showed you yesterday, we said we weren't gonna throw out. Yeah, we're gonna th we're throwing it out now. And it was evident that the two low level center and the mid level center were not gonna be on the same page and therefore really hamper its opportunity to develop. So here we go forward in time. There's that heavy rain continuing through Thursday at eight o'clock. And then that pushes into parts of Eastern Texas as you see that swirl again moving through Houston. We'd have to watch this again for Texas, of course. We know about the flash flooding going on, but it's another round of tropical moisture moving into central Texas as well with that deep tropical moisture still present over parts of the Gulf. So we're going to end up watching that for more flash flooding potentially as we get into Friday and through the start of the weekend. But there you go. Not a lot of fanfare. Certainly does not look organized by any means, certainly as a tropical system as we would all know and expect it to look like. In terms of the amount of rain, tropical moisture is really hard to gauge on the model, so we can end up doubling some of these in some aspects. And really, the opportunity, I think, that is best or highest for flash flooding is going to be probably from Port Arthur 
through Grand Isle in that very small line, maybe up to Greensburg. But that is, I think, the northern extent. It's going to be in a very narrow strip because I really don't think it's going to make a run up. It's probably going to skirt the North Gulf Coast. Now, if it does try to lift up, then the forecast is going to change a little bit. But most of the guidance that I'm looking at continues to have it go to the west and drench the North Gulf Coast with four to maybe eight inches of rain and in some isolated cases a little bit higher again uh, tropical moisture like this it's very efficient rainfall production and a lot of times the modeling will underdo uh, the forecast so that's some of the raw uh, model output from our in-house model uh, that I wanted to show you something again that you can't get online in terms of those development chances the hurricane center as of the eight o'clock update we'll get another one at two and eight o'clock still giving it a 40 percent chance again there's nothing jumping off the page of course we're looking closely but there's nothing jumping off the page saying that okay we're going to be able to get this to consolidate there are no signs that that is working in that direction and we'll get into that in just one second again Water temperature wise, it is plenty warm enough. It's some of the warmest water in the Gulf. Those are the development chances. I have the, uh, I have that circle there. So it was a 40% shot. So when I brought my dabber out, um, it queried as we call it the, uh, the percentage, but just to give you an idea, the water temperature around that area. Okay. I guess it's only going to query the inside of that bubble. It's in the mid to upper eighties. And if you live around um, the beaches of Alabama, Mississippi, the uh, panhandle of Florida, New Orleans, you know exactly what I'm talking about there. So really warm water temperature over that little bubble or under that little bubble that is drawn there. Again, that's where the Hurricane Center has their potential tropical development scenario. What I'm showing you now is it's a really, really cool satellite channel on the NOAA Goes East satellite. And you can clearly see here, as we call the mesoscale channel, so we get the update like every minute and it's super high resolution. So I love showing these. You can clearly see what's going on here. So there's the flare up of thunderstorms. That was the mid-level center of 93L. Again, the, the thunderstorms associated with the rotation or the spiral of the spin around the mid-level center. But look toward the Georgia, Alabama line. Notice that spin. That is kind of the naked swirl of 93L that rolled through around St. Augustine-ish yesterday and then just kind of drifted up north of Gainesville, Tallahassee, Dothan, and now closing in on Montgomery, Alabama. Again, it's not going to develop there. It's over land. One of the things we were watching to see if it was going to happen last night was a lot of times the mid-level center where all the thunderstorms are can pull its former low-level center back underneath and then they can try to dance in harmony if you will that did not happen they are even further apart today the other thing is okay underneath this blob of thunderstorms can a new low level center form that's what we're going to be watching likely around this area closer to the big bend today port st joe area if something can get going underneath that new cluster of thunderstorms that are trying to fire there that's the question there's not a lot of time, and it takes a minute for these things to really try to get organized. So I never say never when it comes to the weather. I just don't think significant development wind-wise is coming with this. We know from the remnants of Barry, though, and Tropical Storm Chantal that it does not need to be strong category-wise to be high impact. So again, I still want you guys paying attention to Baton Rouge, to Mobile, New, New Orleans, uh, back towards Port Arthur, just because there's a giant influx of tropical moisture. Example, uh, yesterday, I'm in central Florida, Brevard County, around Mims, uh, Titusville, Scottsmore. A lot of flooding going on. Six to eight inches of rain fell in that area, and it was not even an organized storm. It was just that blob, that mid-level center of tropical moisture sliding right on through uh, parts of the Florida peninsula. So always, 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 when you're talking about even disorganized tropical moisture, it is important to pay close attention. So before we get into the fire aspect of this, because we do have a critical risk out west today, there's a pretty elongated area of strong thunderstorms across the northern tier of the country. We're going to pick this up at one central to eastern, and we have that working out of southeast Minnesota right there. And then we also, whoops, move the map, also have that cluster coming out of Ohio into Pennsylvania, working towards New Jersey. Of course, we don't need any more rain 
in that direction where we had those strong thunderstorms and a lot of flooding in New York City. We also are going to be watching late tonight. There's like a rogue supercell model is picking up there in western Kansas um, on the big board. This complex of thunderstorms. And I'm going to highlight it right here. We're going to watch that for a flash flood threat and a damaging wind, large hail threat late tonight. Note the time that's 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central. That's going to try to slide uh, across the country again. I want you to pay attention to that little circle above, kind of over there, wrong direction, that way, across my head. That is going to loop. That's going to spiral. That's one of those mesoscale convective complexes that we talk about sometimes. You can see that spin there before it tries to decay, moving into Thursday morning as uh, the rain left over from its slides through northern Missouri and into western Illinois. So watching for some severe weather in the west, especially through Kansas and into eastern Colorado from that. Now, critically important, Last but certainly not least, going to be watching this closely, this fire potential that's coming on Wednesday. You never like when you have thunderstorms with mid-level moisture and the air is very, very dry beneath that because we can get dry thunderstorms to erupt. And that means we get the thunderstorm going, a lot of the rain evaporates before it reaches the surface, but there's still the separation of charges within the thunderstorm. We have some ice in the cloud, which gets those charges to develop and move around. We get the lightning. That lightning strikes some things that are very, very dry already. And then we get wildfires to go. And then the wind, the outflow of the thunderstorms help to fuel uh, the storms even more by giving it more ventilation and giving it more wind. So watching for the fire risk really all the way from eastern Nevada through Salt Lake City and in northern Arizona with the heightened risk, that critical risk in red there um, from pretty much southern Idaho and then right on down the Utah-Colorado border west of Colorado Springs um, and then right again on the border. So that's what I'm really concerned with today. I think that's the biggest concern today. Again, the flash flood threat along the North Gulf Coast comes as we move into Thursday into Friday. So that's kind of a couple days heads up on there. Watching critically, again, important for that fire potential on Wednesday. All righty, guys. Let me know if you're still with me. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you watching. I know your time is super valuable. Just wanted to make sure you guys had the best information as we kind of talk about the weather, what's going on, how it's going to impact you. And I always like to talk about the why because I get questions all the time. Why is this happening? Why is that happening? I want to address that. If you have any questions related to anything in this video or not related to anything in this video, uh, we will always uh, put that down. We can address that. That is, of course, the date. Post that in the comments, of course, and I will answer them either in the comments or it can be a focal point to another video just based on that. So we'd love to hear any questions you have. Post that in the comments. Have a great day, guys. Be safe, and we'll catch you next time.